Caddis Maximus here, this time with just a quick review and comparison of a couple very common types of hammer staplers. We have the Arrow hammer stapler and then we have the Rapid Slash Stanley uh, powers or hammer staplers. There are a few other hammer staplers out there, but I consider these to be some of the better ones and particularly these Rapid uh, Stanley ones are really some of the best and the most reliable out there and common enough to where you can actually find uh, replacement uh, stapling blades pretty easily and that's really the only component that could wear out on those as opposed to the arrow which is pretty nice uh, but it appears that uh, trying to circumvent uh, design patents which did expire a while ago on these rapid style when this came out uh, they were trying to get around that and they have a much more complicated not as durable and robust a design although it does function pretty well other designs like the Harbor Freight ones are just built so cheaply that they never, they don't, you know, they kind of work but not for very long and that's something that you could really rely on for weeks and months on end. Especially with uh, hammer staplers where you're going to be driving literally thousands or tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of staples. Hundreds of thousands of staples sounds like a lot of staples and it is. But it's surprising how fast you can belt out staples with one of these. If you're putting up insulation or, say, uh, vapor barriers when you're doing construction, uh, you can just load out just tons of staples. I mean, you can drive, uh, you know, five to ten staples a second if you're fast with uh, one of these rapids. And obviously, <laughs> you'll go through a lot at that pace. Also, if you do have any trouble either with the driving blade or with jam staples, they're really one of the easiest uh, to quickly field, disassemble, and relieve any jams that may occur. Really speaking, these don't jam up ever, very often, but the, what really causes them to jam is when you put in uh, either a totally wrong kind of staple like office staples and then they'll get jammed, or you put in a wide crown staple. That's one of the things to mention. It's one of the most frustrating uh, par aspects of dealing with staplers, both hammer staplers or, you know, hand staplers like uh, uh, the Ace Clippers or any kind of utility push staplers is that there's two different kinds of staple sizes. There's what is known as a wide crown and then there's what is known as a narrow crown. And it's unfortunate there are those two standards I just happened to deal with uh, days of age of gone pat or of uh, <laughs> the past where each stapler manufacturer wanted to have their own kind of special size staples, and they realized that was hurting them more than helping them. Unfortunately, enough staples were sold of both of these dimensions uh, that now you're stuck with wide crown and narrow crown, and you do have to make sure uh, it isn't always you know obvious or consistent which size tools would use a uh, wide crown or a narrow crown. All these hammer staplers are indeed narrow crown staplers or known as Aero T50 staples. Narrow crown staplers, I guess one way you could tell is they narrow crown staplers, staples only go up to a half inch in length so if your stapler such as uh, this arrow says it only goes up to a half inch then you know it would be a narrow crown where white, white crown staples can go longer than a half inch up to five eighths. And there are two styles of staples as we see here. Well actually both of these are a similar style they're just manufactured differently. Um, there are staples that are like this where they have the sharp pointed spikes so they do sink in and penetrate deeper. There are also ones that have flat points. And it seems that the slightly better quality staples are the ones that have the sharp tips versus uh, flat tips. Now as far as why you would want a hammer stapler, um, electric staplers are pretty reliable and, and definitely pretty fast. You don't see a lot of pneumatic staplers because uh, although they do exist, uh, they're cumbersome to use with the, the unwieldy air hose. And they tend to be pretty heavy uh, because of the old air piston setup. And that's always been a crux uh, and a good argument what keeps hammer staplers quite relevant is the fact that it's difficult for a power tool to replace these and offer anything that's close to the convenience, uh, the reliability, and offer uh, much faster speeds. The thing about a hammer stapler, and especially the way these rapid style ones work and the way they're spring loaded, is when you staple, they actually want to bounce back off the surface. So you're actually not spending 
any energy, basically, or very little actually lifting this. So unlike a normal hammer, and a normal hammer does have some bounce back too, but these, because of the spring system, when you staple, uh, it pretty much just launches itself back off the surface. So all you're doing is focusing on a downward hit, and you can go as fast as you can swing, literally as fast as you can swing. Being sm And on these rapids, they're small and convenient. So obviously, this size, you can put it in your pocket, you can put it in the tool belt. Super easy to deal with. Unlike the arrow. Now, the arrow, to get around that whole uh, patent issue, had chosen to use a much different design. And it's a, a lot more complicated. There's a lot more parts to it. It's not as easy to service and clean. Really not as easy to replace the blade. And then ultimately it won't be as reliable. And there's a, the huge fundamental difference is it has this huge head. So, you know, it's not as easy, easy to put in your pocket. It's not as easy to swing in tight spaces. And the way it works is it has this anvil. And when you hit, this anvil gets pushed up, hits these two lever arms, which operate a mechanism inside the head. So when that's pushing up, it pushes on the lever arms. And then there's our little... Uh, staple driver or the little staple uh, pushing wedge. I think pushing wedge is literally what the name of the part was when I saw it online. And so it also, what this, the idea behind this is there's actually a leverage ratio. It's not one to one. As this is going down, that little pushing bar comes up at about twice. So, you know, if I push this half an inch in, that little bar internally is actually moving three quarters of an inch to an inch. So they're using this mechanism to make the little bar move really fast versus this style, which is just linear and direct and uh, works just through absolute force. And that's the one thing that I can admit is it does appear that you don't have to swing quite as hard with this stapler to drive the, the staple uh, as deeply or flush as you do with this rapids. And also admittedly, this type of system here doesn't damage the surface as much. It's not something you're really concerned about, but sometimes when you're running staples with handler staplers, particularly with these, if you're not uh, real accurate, when they come down and hit, this whole head can really leave a pretty nasty dent. And so that'll be some of the nice comments. Unfortunately, just due to the size, the fact that it's, to tell you the truth, it's probably about the same weight but it just never will really be as convenient or as robust as these. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at these and I'll show you. Well, let's take a quick comparison of the original Rapid. This is who invented this design. Rapid is actually a pretty well-known Swedish staple company and they make a variety of mechanical staplers, uh, utility staplers, hammer staplers, even office and desk staplers. And they're actually a quality brand. They're really nice. The original ones do say Rapid. Um, they were designed and manufactured in uh, Sweden, and this is an old one that really was made in Sweden. But Stanley licensed them, and see the Stanley one is exactly the same. This is why I consider a second generation. You can see the head is just slightly different with a different plate in there. And they're of course made in Taiwan now instead of being made actually in Sweden. And the Stanley has a uh, larger, uh, bigger soft grip rubber hammer. It does disassemble the same way, but they made it so it's just not quite as uh, inconvenient as this disassembly pin, which really sticks out pretty far. And sometimes, especially if you're left-handed, you'll end up grabbing onto that pin and it'll bite right into your hand right here. Um, and that can be an issue. One nice thing about this pin is it can be the, it can be pulled out and put on either side. So it is ambidextrous. So if you're a left-handed person, you can move the pin and put it in through the other side. Let's get a block of wood up here and see what we can do. Okay, there's a block of uh, Douglas fir. It's not anything particularly special, certainly not oak. I will have to say that the, uh, another nice aspect of these rapids is that when you do have tough materials, you can swing these really hard and uh, pretty much drive a staple. You can drive a staple in the materials that you cannot remove it from. The acceleration will accelerate the, the legs of the staple into, say, dry oak. And you'll never be able to pull it out. If you try to pull it out, each of the little legs will just snap off and you'll end up with just a little bar from the top of the staple. And that was the other aspect about these rapids is that they really are super duty since they just rely on the mass of the head here. 
um, they get a great excuse of adding a bunch of extra steel to give it more weight as well as giving it lots of extra reinforcement. So these things really are super heavy duty. And what's odd about how reliable they are is literally uh, they're only held in by two things. Liter well, this pin is what really holds the bar in, but you do have to remove the driving blade in order to take it apart. But that's the only thing. You remove one screw and you pull out one pin and you can disassemble and clean them. Uh, really just not comparable to any other design. They all have nice spring-loaded systems, which will hold... Uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred or so staples, I believe. Let's go and get some staples in there. You always know if you have the wrong staples because they will not slide in easily. It'll be plainly obvious. It has a nice catch where it actually... Oh, come. These things are always a little funky. Where it has an actual T-slot. So this goes in, drops down into the slot, and then backs up. So it never had a problem with the uh, staple or the tension spring having any kind of issue. And you can see this one, it's actually it still has the metric measurements where it's 140 and then six, eight, size 140, six, eight, or 10 millimeters long. But these things are just great because, sorry about the noise. Sort of warned you a little bit beforehand. We're gonna do a couple little hammers here. I may even turn down the sound in the video. So with these, if you hit lightly, they quite don't drive in all the way. And all you have to do is kind of make sure that you're square and you don't ever focus on hitting with force. With these staplers, the only thing you think about is swinging. If it, the staple isn't doing what you want it to, swing it a little faster. And then these can do, it's just amazing how fast you can drive staples. You can just go, voila. And as you can see here, even when you drive them fast, if you try to keep them square, pretty much they'll all go level. I probably could have used this a little bit more force. But you can see in that situation where the way it bounces off and how fast you're able to drive them, any type of power stapler uh, is going to have a hard time competing because even if you could launch staples out much faster than what I just did here, you're just going to be randomly shooting in places and ha instead of having any kind of accuracy. And the nice thing about the hammer is you can just go along and you know you just drove five or six different staples. This would be a good time to mention the little Harbor Freight stapler puller, which actually works pretty well. It's similar to the other Bossage where the upper handle is actually connected via pivot point and then this bottom piece is the hook. So when you hook under the staple and you press up, on the handle, what it's doing is causing this to rock and pinch the staple. And the harder you're pulling up on the staple, the harder it pinches. So it actually removes them pretty well. You just do that and they just pop right out. So I did want to mention that Harbor Freight does have a pretty nice staple remover and uh, it's actually pretty effective. You can see how we can just go ahead and pop all these out. So there is a nice easy to use staple uh, remover. They're sold at most places and they kind of look like this uh, Pittsburgh, but I wanted to mention that Harbor Freight has a nice cheap one. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Ace. The Ace is in this not quite as heavy duty. The back plate isn't held in as well. It's kind of, it's not captured as firmly, I should say. And so sometimes I've had issues where you kind of bump against this and it kind of gets pushed down like that and it sometimes wants to pop out. I've had to admit that a, a couple times this has popped out. I guess one nice aspect of this ACE in that mechanical system that kind of accelerates the anvil is that you don't have to swing quite as hard. It does a little better when you're on off hits. So, and let me go ahead and move it around this side. This block's getting pretty beat up. But this one's not so bad. All right, sound volume here. We're going to hammer a little bit. See, it does a little better when you're uh, on softer blows, but it seems to have a more of a consistency issue unless you strike hard with it. And that's always been kind of the issue, is even when I am striking hard, the ace just does not really want to deliver the staples. You really got to be square. Otherwise, this whole wide frame, and, I, and that's part of the issue, and I'm just... Uh, seeing that now is that when you hit, if you hit a little bit off to the side, it's going to kind of cause this to deflect over simultaneously while driving the staple. And you're going to get this issue here 
where a lot of the staples end up getting kind of mushed and folded over. It's really surprising. Just swinging it the same way I was swinging that rapid, I had, you know, much worse results. I went ahead and just flipped this over to the other side. I was going to pull out those staples, but that wasn't going to work out. We're just going to do one more little test this time with the Stanleys just to show how it really is this specific design is just pretty much one of the best out there. Uh, they really found it. And really comparing to that arrow, these things are just magnificently easy. Uh, using the same hammering force and technique as close as I can get it where that arrow is having a lot of folded over staples. Okay, I just drove all the staples. I could have swung a little harder to get them driven deeper, but you can see I just drove a lot of those randomly. And none of them have that issue where they were getting smooshed and folded over on the top. And actually, that's pretty surprising. That is a uh, pretty convincing argument right there just to use this style. So even though this is a little long review, I think, um, or hopefully made the point that when you do buy a hammer stapler, and a lot of times you want to get, you know, do some stapling, get one of these and it'll pretty much last you the rest of your life. And it'll work reliably, it'll be easier to use, and you don't have to worry about it if it falls or drops onto anything. Um, it's really hard to damage one of these to the point where it won't operate. Where one of these ace ones, there's all sorts of parts and get all sorts of damaged and uh, not operate consistently. Let's get this block out of here and I'll do the last thing, which is showing uh, the, hu whoops, the huge advantage to these rapids as far as rebuilding. This ace can be rebuilt, but you gotta have screwdrivers, and you know little nut drivers to take the nuts apart and you got to take apart all these different assemblies it's really kind of a just a hassle we're on the rapid literally all and these stanleys all you need is a four millimeter allen wrench it's the one thing is you got to take out an allen screw on the head of the stapler and they do use thread locker red on it which is very wise and for the most part, you don't really need to put any fresh on, but you can, if you want to, scrape off the thread locker and put some fresh thread locker in there. The next thing you want to do, whoop, there was a single staple, is just kind of flex it a little bit so that that little blade will want to work out. And this is all that's driving it. And you can see if this is what you need to replace the driving blade that's just started to get worn out, you, you pull out one screw and you just pop this out and put in a new one so you can see how amazingly easy that is. And then all you all you do is you just press a little bit here, pop out that pin. Let's actually make sure we pull out the the spring. And then this you just thumb it out like this. Voila. And then that's all there is to it. So we can pull out one screw, pull out a pin, and easily we can clean this all up. If there's any kind of weird like sawdust or wood chips or somehow magically staples got trapped into the body, uh, easily able to clean it out. You can see that they added even more mass besides this big steel uh, reinforcing plate. They actually have a weight, uh, steel weight in the top of the head. That's what these two bolts are for. And that also provides the threaded or the fastening. This steel block is what this is directly attached to right in there. So it provides a nice solid heavy piece of steel that is directly connected to the piece that's driving the staple and I think that's one of the reasons it seems to work so well is because the driving blade is just bolted to the heaviest part of the tool and then if you have any kind of jams in here obviously this is just the rail it just it's actually two pieces of metal inner and outer and so if you have any jams now you can easily clear them out and yank them out with a piece of needle nose pliers and be on your way and reassembling really is pretty easy too because all you do is just put that into the bottom, slide it back. And what's really kind of interesting about this system is once you get it slid back, if we can, is the pin is nicely rounded and you can see where it's like, oh, it's not aligned. But when you actually compress it, it causes that hole to line up. And then you just take the pin and push it in and it just goes right in. It's actually super duper simple. And then all you do is take the little, this little uh, uh, driving anvil and push it in until it's lined up. Uh, yeah, you can just see it in there. 
and then put the screw right back in. It's really that easy. So uh, that aspect of it, and I wanted to spend the extra couple minutes showing that uh, tear down and rebuild is that kind of design just makes it unbelievable. Uh, it's easily rebuildable, pretty much indestructible, and I pretty much recommend these over any other uh, design that's out there. Anyway, that was my big long review on hammer staplers, and I kind of wanted to add my two cents in a YouTube video over it and show some of the reasons where one like this may seem good really is like this arrow is actually uh, even though it's a well-made product just is a not a very good design compared to what else is available anyway I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe Caddis Maximus out